look into the Bible from the very beginning in Genesis right through to the end Revelation we see angels the appearance of angels that were the God's messengers sent to help those who are the heirs of salvation they went to help Israel and help the born again church today they were assigned by God to help us and protect us and do all kinds of things but we find in many instances in the Bible they speak to people and they are awesome beings there's different kinds of angels that is I won't go into all the different kinds today but in this verse here we have an angel speaking to this man now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of his sleep and he said to me what do you see so I said, I am looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it, and on the stand, seven lamps with the seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right of the bowl and the other at its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple, his hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line and hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. Then I answered and said to him, What are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstand and at its left? And I further answered and said to him, What are these two olive branches that drip, and drip into the receptacles of the two gold pipes from which the golden oil drains? Then he answered me and said, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he said, These are the two anointed ones who stand before the Lord of the whole earth. Now we're looking into the scripture here, and we took, we've got olive trees here. What do olive trees speak to us of today? Olive oil. Olive oil. And um, we've got a lampstand of pure gold with a bowl on the top, and there's seven lamps, with seven pipes, there's seven lamps, and that lamp has to be fed with oil, and it's olive oil, so that it may light up this is a pure lamp stand and, uh, and when, when we're talking about purity we're speaking about God is pure and, uh, and God is purifying our lives day by day and this, this is a pure lamp stand for this oil to be fed into it and for it to be lit and for it to shine brightly it's, and uh, this lamp stand has got no dross impurities in it whatsoever it's a pure lamp stand and two olive trees are by it one at the right of the bowl and the other on its left so what does that speak of? The two olive trees speak about that they are feeding the oil into the lamps. Into the lamp. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked to me, saying, What are these, my Lord? And then the angel talked to me and answered me, do you, uh, do you not know what these are? And so on. And then he says, It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of us. Now, when we're talking about um, the olive oil in the Bible, the olive trees and the lamp stand, and we're talking about from the olive tree comes the olive oil. We're talking about that olive oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit of God. And when we're talking about the lampstands, the purity, we're talking about God at the church of Jesus Christ. We could talk about individuals of the church corporately or universally. But that olive oil is for the church. And, uh, and that olive oil there is to be fed into the church, the Holy Spirit, so to empower it to be a light to the world. That's it. Praise the Lord. Because he said it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. This is all speaking about the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Uh, this is all speaking about the power of the Holy Spirit in the church of Jesus Christ. Without the power of the Holy Spirit in the church of Jesus Christ, all we've got is dead religion or religious formalism. We haven't got the signs, the wonders and the miracles. We've got to rely on the Holy Spirit. 
daily in your life that school, college, work, whatever you do, we have to rely on the Spirit of God. When you read the Bible, who, who reveals things to you through the Bible? The Holy Spirit. He's the Spirit of interpretation and revelation. So when you read in the Bible and you think, well, I've not seen that before, it's because the Holy Spirit is showing you. The Bible is a book of revelation. When you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit anoints it. He's got that power to anoint it and bring it alive to you. People who don't, don't know Jesus Christ don't know the Bible like you know him. It's a special book for Christians. And so it's all about the Holy Spirit because it says in here, in verse 7, Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Now Zerubbabel was the governor. And they went back to rebuild the temple. And there was all kinds of opposition and discouragement. And they hadn't even got the foundation. You know, it was all that. They, they, were, they were dealing with rubble and everything else. So he got, you know, they had enemies persecuted him and everything else. They discouraged him in the end. They got discouraged. But God sent this word through Zechariah uh, to encourage and to keep keep on. Keep doing it. Don't don't give in. Keep on. And and it's not it's not your might, it's not your power. But it's my spirit that's going to assist you to rebuild the temple. Because it's not by might. It's not by human might. It's not by human power or ingenuity. It's by the power of my Holy Spirit. And then it says in verse 7, Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain. You see, these things have become a mountain. And sometimes in our lives, at school, college, work, whatever we have to face in life, certain molehills, can become mountains, it can become unsurmountable problems and we wonder what to do with them when we're faced with them. Well that's the time when we, you daily as Christians we need to rely on the Holy Spirit, we need to pray uh, daily and read the word and then we've got the Holy Spirit with us and then we can deal with these things and they, on our own the mountain will get large, huge and we'll feel like grasshoppers and we'll look at that mountain, we'll look like pieces of dwarfs. And we think, it can't be removed, it's impossible. You see, when you don't read and pray, everything becomes impossible. And I would just walk, uh, walk away from it. Can't keep walking forward. But when you read the word and pray, it imparts faith to you, the power of the Holy Spirit to say, you can do it and you can do something about this. You don't have to run away from it. Sometimes we have to go around the mountain. But there are other times when we have to walk up to the mountain. As we walk up in the power of the Holy Spirit and start, instead of dodging it, walking away, running away, it starts to crumble before us. Because it says here, Who are you a great mountain before Zerubbabel? You shall come a plain. There's a temple to be built here. It was rubble. But he was saying, you're going to build it. Because it says in here, And he shall bring forth the capstone of the temple, with shouts of grace, grace to it. So it's all by the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit. It's not something we deserve, not something we've earned. Grace is unmerited favour. It means that God has given us his Holy Spirit because we belong to him to help us through the issues of life, to help us with our problems at school, with relationship problems, with job problems, with financial problems. And we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. That means we have to pray about everything. And when we do, the Holy Spirit's going to work miracles for us because we're relying on him and not on our own intellect, ingenuity, or status, or, or ability, or anything like that. Instead, we put all that aside and say, Lord, I need your help. And that's what he was saying, I need your help. And the angel came to saying, you're going to get God's help, because it's not by your might or power. Don't rely on that, rely on the Holy Spirit of God. And so in verse 8, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple, the governor, laid the foundation, it's going in, it's been done, and so on, his hands shall also finish it. So what God has asked us to do, he doesn't want us to walk away at the beginning or halfway through, through discouragement. He's saying, your hands will finish it. Keep your faith up, maintain it by reading the word of prayer. Walk forward, don't walk away. The only way to become a strong Christian is to face the issues of life with God. And where we, we, we dodged, avoid and run away from before, we wouldn't face it, we tried to find a way out. What we have to do now is to say, Lord, help me to sort this out. This is how we become strong. We face our fears and each time we do it, we walk forward and start to deal with issues. And we have to work through issues. We all have to. You get household issues, you get job issues, you get issues in all kinds of things. But instead of running away, you think, well, 
I've got to work my way through this and sort this out bit by bit, even categorise it, but do it. And so the hands of Zer Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you'll know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. You'll know that this is the word of God because it's by the power of the Holy Spirit and that proved true. For who has despised the day of small things? You might feel in yourself you're small. But that's okay, that's great because you realize that God is big. It doesn't matter how small you feel, insignificant you feel in this life. And some people, you know, they're, they're, they're climbing their success ladder and they've got status and everybody, they seem to, to, to draw the cards after them and everything else and their success is based on their own charisma and ability. You see, it's different in the kingdom of God because it doesn't matter how small or insignificant or unnoticed you are, we should never despise the day of small things because God doesn't because God delights to work with people like that that humble themselves in the sight of the Lord and rely on the greatness of God for who has despised the day of small things for these seven rejoiced to see the plumb line of Hannah's rubber but what does the plumb line mean the plumb line is used for building to get the wall straight and so of the building of the temple you bring you bring the brick, the bricks of the stones in line with the plumb line it's dropped down there's a little weight on the end and so on and so on, and so it says here, for these seven rejoice to see the plumb line, in other words, it's speaking about, you're going to carry on building. So, they are the eyes of the Lord that stand uh, to and fro throughout the whole earth. The seven speaks of perfection. And so the sevenfold spirit of God, um, the eyes of the Lord, uh, seven is the number of God. Then I answered and said to him, what are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstand and at its left? He wanted to know. It, it, it's not wrong to inquire about God, uh, uh, about certain things. He doesn't always show us everything. And we want to know all about the future. He doesn't show us that. We have to trust him for that. Sometimes he might show you a bit. But there's no, it's not wrong to ask God questions about things, especially if you don't understand things in the Bible or the issues of life, whatever it may be. You can ask him questions because have you noticed throughout this, he's asking the angel questions. And the angel is getting the answers from God. Then they answered and said to him, What are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstand and at its left? And I further answered and said to him, What are these two olive bran branches that drip into the septicles of the two gold pipes in which the golden oil drains? Then he answered me and said, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my lord. So I said, These are the two anointed ones who stand beside the Lord of the whole earth. These are two men. Revelation chapter 11 speak about the two men, the two prophets are called sons of oil, the anointed ones. Now, they have a special ministry by God, and they couldn't possibly be the ones that would pour that golden oil into the church, not only into the church of Jesus Christ, but into the Jewish nation as well. If they didn't have an absolute um, um, ever-flowing supply of the Holy Spirit, because if it was just them, they would have nothing to pour into the receptacles of the church to make it, uh, to, to speak the word of God to the church. But these two men would be men of prayer and the word and everything I've been speaking about today. So they're prime examples to follow and say, well, I want to be like that. I want to be a person that is so full of the Holy Spirit that wherever I go, I've got ministry for that individual, or for a church, or for the whole world, or for the nations of the world. Because these men had it, and they only got it through one way. They didn't get a magic formula from God and say, oh, just here, click the switch, you don't have to do anything. They were people who devoted themselves, these two prophets, to prayer and the reading of the world. They did it daily, and they will do it daily. And they had a special mission from God. We all have, we're all individuals and we all have something special from God and we can only be effective as much as we rely on God, the Holy Spirit and reading the word and prayer. Then when we go out daily, we'll always have an answer for every, everyone who asks us a reason of the hope within us and we'll always have ministry because we'll always be ready and full of the Holy Spirit of God. This whole chapter speaks about the power of the Holy Spirit of God. It's Him working through us, it's Him who we rely on to perform the miracle, to remove the mountain and do everything else. And that's who... That was for them thousands of years ago. And the, the same message is for us today. Let's pray. Water the seeds, O oh Lord, so it brings forth much fruit in Jesus' name. And give everybody a safe journey home. Amen.